you are on screen pretty much the entire time and talking about challenges. Like, what was that challenge when you are in every single scene? Feels a little bit like theater, like because you're on so much. And I think what I loved about that and being in leading roles is that as the days go by, your all the nonsense gets stripped away. And I feel like it doesn't become a challenge, but it becomes something that I'm looking forward to because I get another opportunity to just tell the truth without the, the, the nonsense. Do you know what I mean? It's like physically it's exhausting. You're there like first one in, last one out, but you're getting to track with your character each day. First of all, congratulations. Aisha is so powerful. It is a story we rarely get to see. Um, but take me back, like, what was it that struck you when you first read the script that said, yes, I have to be a part of this story? Um, firstly, thank you for taking time to watch it and, you know, spending time with it. Um, I feel like the script got me from the very beginning. I loved how everything was really like simplified and just stripped back. It wasn't filled with a lot of words, but it was mostly, I could feel just how centering the role was, like how it was just about what she was feeling on an internal like level. And, and, and I really was intrigued by that. The provision system also, I didn't know about, um, very aware of the immigration system in the UK in terms of like England specifically and, you know, around the world too, but didn't know that Ireland had this system. And for me, it was just like tapping into the script. That was the first thing that just pulled me into it. And I wanted to challenge myself to just showcase another aspect of my talent where you know, so so much of what we do is so much about the words and hardly about, you know, what's internal and kind of like stripped back. And that was the challenge too. So I feel like my initial response to it was just an opportunity to tell something on a deeper level um, without so much words and, and, and just tell a story that meant something to me. Yeah. Um, the journey that, you know, we see I should go on, you know, just what is revealed and just the experience that she has to go through. Um, you know, talk about working with Frank Berry, who wrote and directed this, to to just help you understand a lot of that and also what you did to prepare for this because it is happening every day every minute, you know, in the UK and Ireland across the world, you know? Yeah. I really, <clears throat> I really loved working with Frank. Um, I definitely questioned him on his approach to the project and, you know, why this story, why him? And I loved that he was quite, <laughs> no pun intended, but he was quite frank. He was like taxpayers' money, his the taxpayer payers money of the people of Ireland is going into the system and we need to know how it's being used. Is it actually helping the people the way they deserve to be helped and to, and to be treated? So I think he was, he was intrigued just as a citizen, as what was, ha you know, what was happening. And then as a filmmaker, it, it allowed him to step into that place of like research and literally like making friends and finding out about you know people who had experienced the provision system so for me it was you know I, I found somebody who was they were absolutely serious about what they were writing and what they wanted to tell so he wasn't being phony about it and I think the way he approached it too and allowed me to go on that experience and that journey of researching with him I got to speak to people who really experienced the provision system I got to to hear about the the highs and the lows of it I got to it was it's very balanced and fair and it you know surprisingly you know you expect people to just 
maybe say all the negatives, but they also shared the ways in which the system helped them, but also the ways in which the system needed to be improved. And I really love that balanced way of thinking about everything. Um, and it just helped me with the character. So I collaborated with Barry. Um, I, I, I collaborated w- with Frank and just tapped into the truth of the character, what she was feeling um, and just allowed and just trusted myself. And then he trusted me too. And for for me, it was, again, just being able to be like a vessel for this character and, and the truth of it and what people are feeling out there in the world. Um, it just ticked all the boxes for me as an artist. Yeah. Um, I was I was so fascinated by the interview process scene. You know, you have the scene where she's, you know, we're practicing and, and, you know, going through that. And then obviously the end. Um, and again, like I said, it's something we rarely get to see or hear. Talk about filming those, that, that you know, that sequence, the one at the beginning and the one at the end where you're, you know, you hear her, you know, you hear her truth come out and it's just. Yeah, it was, um, it was tough. Because again, I am feeding off of real people's experiences and I'm carrying them with me in every scene. But also what I wanted was, I wanted to use that scene as an oppor- those scenes as an opportunity to, to show the journey. Mm. And we're seeing this character in limbo, you know, we're seeing her wait for the opportunity to kind of just have the life that she wants to live. And it's, she's not asking for much. She's, she really just wants to have a stable job so she can look after her mom and make sure that everything is, is fine. But I think for me with those scenes, I I worked a lot with, with Frank. I keep saying his last name. It's so, it's so yeah, I keep saying <laughs> very, but it's a, but yeah, I worked a lot with Frank to make sure that the story just felt truthful like it just felt like I didn't want another story of someone that just like being portrayed as totally hating their country and don't want to be there it's like no she's like I love my country I want to go home (laughs) but what is at home right now in my current situation particular like specific for me as Aisha is just not safe and I'm trying to find a way to navigate that so I think for me I really love that approach of just just zoning into you know especially like particularly like what she was aiming for trying to find like her objectives and all of it as well but those scenes were tough um there's a lot of things you're carrying but again in it you're trying to find the truth i do love the dynamic that connor played by joshua connor brings into Aisha's world, like, you know, you see her, you see her radiate, you know, like she lights up a bit. Um, talk about that dynamic and working with Josh and just having, you know, those scenes in juxtaposition to everything else that she is going through. Hmm. Yeah, I liked it, you know. Um, I wanted it to feel unexpected, you know, and I tried to do that with the way I approached each scene. Like if I felt a scene was like trying to set up the romantic, really, I'll just be like, Frank, can we just not do that? You know, if they pass each other on the stairs, do not let them look at each other. Like, you know, just trying to strip it back and keep it as realistic as possible. Um, But what I love about that dynamic between them is like, he's, he's on the other side of, you know, his trauma and his experiences he's on the other side of it and he's he's finally not in limbo anymore but she still is and i feel like what he's presenting to her she's finding it hard to accept because you know it's kind of like how can you be how can you move how could you move in this direction of love and kind of like companionship but your mom is at home and you need to you need to find a way to help her and you have such a big situation happening you know you can't afford to even fall in love for a second you know what I mean your your life is in limbo so I think it pres- what I like about the dynamic of you know Aisha and and Connor is like the truth that you know even if you want something 
you know, and if it, and even if it's 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 right there in front of you, you can't always accept it because, you know, life is challenging at the moment, and you need to like focus on how to get yourself out of that limbo. Um, and I think she didn't want to bring him into it too, and I thought that was a very like brave thing to tell someone that you clearly you you clearly care about that. I can't bring you on this journey with me. This is something I have to figure out on my own. And I don't know what's going to happen to me. And I, f- I felt like that was quite heartbreaking, but it's the truth. You know, you can't even, you can't even think about having a, a life that is not stable without the disapproval process. You know, it's a lot of things at stake. Yeah. Um, This film, you are on screen pretty much the entire time and talking about challenges, like, what was that challenge when you are in every single scene? Hmm. It can be physically exhausting. But it's also feels a little bit like theater, like because you're on so much. And I think what I loved about that and being in leading roles is that as the days go by, your all the nonsense gets stripped away. And I feel like it doesn't become a challenge, but it becomes something that I'm looking forward to because I get another opportunity to just tell the truth without the the, the nonsense. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's just that process that you go through of stripping it back every single day, just stripping it back, just finding the truth. And I think trusting that in the edit room, it's just going to all come, it's going to all come together. So I think, you know, physically it's exhausting. You're there like first one in, last one out, but you're getting to track with your character each day and you're getting to try each day to add different flavors and different things to your character and really just sit with them for that 30 days that you're filming or how many days you're filming. I think we probably did this in like 17 days or something like that, or maybe 20 days. But yeah, that's what I love love about it. And that's what I find challenging about it. Yeah, I love that. Um, Aisha is such a beautiful contribution to you wanting to tell your truth and be authentic. Like, what did you learn about yourself playing Mm -hmm. Aisha? That's such a great question. Um, To be quite honest, I learned the importance of making sure that I'm processing, processing in a, in a, in a, in a healthy way. Um, I'm trying to find the the right avenues to discuss like how I'm feeling. You know, I, I think Aisha was actually a starting point for my journey in therapy, which was something that I really, really needed. Um, And I just felt like this character allowed me to grow in that area. Um, I loved how resilient she is, you know, but also how she embraced when moments weren't going well and she allowed herself to feel um, and not, and not try to be the strong woman all the time. Like that's faking it for the world. She was, she was really going through it and she had like, good days and bad days so I think she really taught me a lot um but also helped me to understand and have compassion for people who go through these situations um because we can really be quite judgmental and we can think we know it all but we don't and she she helped me to grow in that area too yeah one line that really really I mean there are so many great moments but like one line and it goes back to the interview where she's like I'm just here for safety um talk about that line and how again like you know you learn I learned so much just watching it um but talk about that line and what that step what you wanted that to say because it does say so much but take us inside your world and what Mm. I love, yeah, I love that you mentioned that. It's so funny when you do a project, you forget like everything. 
<laughs> you forget so much about what you said, you know, what the scenes were like. But I do remember that line. And I think it, it goes back to what I wanted to portray with this character. Like I I was sick and tired of like the way other projects and kind of like the way the the, the belief is is like people don't want to be a part of their country and their homeland. And it's like that's not true. It's like people love where they're from, you know, and it's just certain situations and circumstances may cause people to leave. You know, it, it, it's a variety of reasons, but I wanted to use this as an opportunity to not paint the picture like, oh my God, this woman is like, Nigeria is not where I want it. She wants to go home. She, she wants to be with her family. She loves her country. And, you know, having been, you know, someone that's, you know, been to West Africa, like, I freaking love it there. Do you know what I mean? Like, Ghana is always <laughs> beautiful, you know, South Africa, you know. So for me, it was just about that line was just about using that as an opportunity to let people know, like, this is not what you think it is. It's not a case of disappointment of where I'm from. I love where I'm from. It's just that my current situation specific to me as I show it's just I'm I need safety it's not, and and until it gets safe when it's safe I would love to go back but until then I'm just trying to get help like don't want anything for free I don't want a handout I just want to be able to to work and look after myself and my family I think essentially that's that's the connection to that line that I wanted and just to like knock down some like wrong thoughts towards people wanting to seek asylum yeah i love yeah. that it is it is a deep intense role um how do you say goodbye to aisha if if that's the right if saying goodbye is the right term but like when you know it's like that's a wrap how do yeah. you take care of yourself yeah it's hard but like i said um being responsible for, for 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 my mental health and making sure like I tap into therapy to discuss it. My own little rituals of like saying thank you to the character. Um, thank you for what they've taught me, um, what she's taught me in that time and um and what I've been able to give to her and just praying that people feel it. That's you know, till I pass away, that's what I really want. So I guess, and it's just allowing life to kind of like trans, allowing it to transition out from from my from my body and from my my emotions. But I never forget them, you know. And I love these type of questions because it makes me realize, like, wow, I live with this this person for like <laughs> months, you know, maybe sometimes years. I'm working on a project right now. I'm about to start, and I've been training for a year so it's just like living with this routine and this discipline for a year so yeah that's how I, I try to find my my own little ritual and ways to like say goodbye and like to 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 pray that people feel them when when they look at the when they look at the the, the projects incredible and I love that ending I love the ambiguity of it all yeah it's not it's not a perfect ending it's just she, she might for all we know, Aisha could still be in limbo right now. We don't know. Yeah. Which is the reality of that situation. Mm -hmm. um, it is. But Aisha is an incredible film. Letitia, congratulations on that performance. It is so powerful. And if you haven't seen it, I implore you to, to watch it. Um, and if you've seen it, it is worth revisiting again. It's an incredible performance. And thank you so much. For joining us for this conversation. Thank you to everybody for tuning in today.